Hello and welcome to the video. This is a first look at one of the new frames from Speedybee. This is the new Speedybee Master 3X modular frame designed for 3 to 3.5 inch FPV racing quads. Now there are a couple of cool things on here that I've built this out and I kind of wanted to kind of go through it with you. Speedybee have obviously been really thinking about what pilots need and listening to lots of feedback and I love it when manufacturers do that. Now, I'm a fan of Speedy B frames. I've built quite a few of them here. In fact, one of my last quadcopter building for beginners series used one of the Speedy B frames because they are really well made and go together really nicely. Everything you need comes in the box. Plus, they aren't super expensive. This without the head unit which is here at the front and more about that in a moment is about 32 dollars however if you get it with the aluminium head like i have it here it's still under 40 dollars for everything that you see here so you just need to add your flight controller your motors and your receiver and hd fpv stuff stick a battery on the top and you're ready to go now the big headline with this is this cage at the front it's available in three different versions this is the aluminium one uh, there's an aluminium alloy head built for the 03 dji unit there's the aluminium alloy head built for the 04p unit for the dji system and there's also an injection molded head as well and for those of you that watch the channel regularly, you may have noticed that the front of this looks very similar to something called the B25 from Speedy B that I looked at in Halloween in 2024. That was a frame that's a little bit different, but actually had the same kind of design for the FPV pod at front. And I didn't realize that that was the start of something that was going to become an interchangeable piece within the Speedy B frame family little bit disappointed speedy b that you're not making universal ones of these for people who want to use walk snail or people who want to use things like hd zero it'll be easy to put 20 by 20 millimeter mounting holes and bracket on the side so that you can use whatever you want please stop listening to your dji rep and think about all of us out here who don't fly their stuff but the really cool part about this is that by undoing four screws this entire piece can come off that means that this can be moved from model to model and that appears to be what speed b are actually up to they're designing these things so that you can have just one dji 04 or 03 unit set up in here or i'm pretty sure it'd be very easy to mod this for things like walk snail or hd zero and then as you get other frames and you can buy the frames without this front piece you can actually move it from to frame to frame depending on what you want to fly I have been asking manufacturers to do this for a very long time, so I'm personally very excited to see that somebody has actually got round to do it. That means that rather than have to buy an expensive $150, $170, $200 HD FPV unit for every single one of your quads, you can just have one pod that you move from quad to quad, and that's going to save you an absolute fortune. So the specs, while I show you how this comes in the box, again, this is the Speedy B Master 3X frame. Wheelbase is 171 millimeters. The carbon fiber top plates, they don't appear to be the weaved carbon fiber in this particular frame. The top plate is two millimeters. The middle plate is two and the bottom is two as well. Arms are four millimeters. Camera installation pitch at the front is 19 to 20 millimeters. There isn't an awful lot of give, particularly in this aluminium frame front that I've got here. Stack installation height is pretty limited. It's only 11 millimeters. So you're gonna want an all-in-one flight controller to go in the middle of here. Stack mounting holes are 25.5 and 25.5 millimeters. So you're gonna want that kind of flight controller designed for these smaller models. The injection molded head that you can get with this is compatible with the O3A unit, the Link, the TX800, TX Ultra, and it's except for the O3. Um, the O3 aluminium head, which is compatible with pretty much the same stuff. And then you have the O4 Pro aluminium alloy head, which is the one I have here. Propeller size supported is three to 3.6 inches. Motor mounting holes are nine to 12 millimeters. They're oval shapes, which gives you a little bit of wriggle room. Weight is about 87 to 89 grams without the head. An awful lot of motor options. See the manual for that. Everything from 1507 to 2105.5s. Recommended KV 3000 
to 3600 kV on a 4S. If you're going to build this as a 6S ripper, then 2200 to 2750 is what you're recommended. Battery size on here, it says 67 by 31 by 40 millimeters. You could potentially squeak it just over 67 and just go a little wider than 31 millimeters. And the recommended battery is going to be something like a 4S LiPo, 750 to 1100 is probably going to fit here or a 6s something like a 650 to 850 the gps supported size at the back if you're interested fitting one of those and i would recommend doing that if you're going to put a hd system on something like this is the 18.1 by 18.1 millimeter sizes if I was going to build this out, I would get something like the SpeedyB F405 all-in-one 40 amp unit that would fit beautifully in here. And I'd probably stick on the SpeedyB 1507 3600 kV motors with HQ3525 props. So how easy it is to build? Well, if you can build a Lego model and follow a Lego manual, this one is going to work. Speedy B makes some really clear, easy to follow manuals, and it's not too tricky at all. The rear piece is 3D printed. It's one of the few pieces that are. I think it's made of ABS or some kind of slightly flexible rubber. It does have the USB connector at the back, and that's also the one that has that ability to take the GPS in there too. Also has a captive XT30 connector, as well as the bits for the side that will take the struts that hold everything together all of the stuff if you've just seen as you take it apart is labeled beautifully and the screws excitingly also have thread lock on the ones that are designed to go into metal parts really nice attention to detail everything is well packaged and they even have little notches on the side so you can rip them open with your fingers you don't have to hunt around for a craft knife to build it it's pretty straightforward you get these three plates out of the first largest packet and then start putting them together using the supplied screws put the arms in place, put the screws through them, and then once you've done that, flip it over and install the four risers. Those four risers are going to be what most of the plastics are gonna latch onto. Attach the receiver socket into the bottom of this plastic part and pop that over the rear. That means then there's a place for you to plug your receiver in the bay at the bottom, really smart idea put in the plastics in the front that are going to be there to support the bottom of the mandibles that put the part where the actual HD FPV pod goes onto then build the battery bay the strap goes over these metal pieces on each side then you can slide on the rear cover that's where your receiver is going to go with the antenna out the back so lovely design right at the back of the model horizontally mounted and then flip it back over install these plastic pieces on each side screw in the rear piece with the standoffs in once that's there you can see that we have the space for the flight controller here loads of room inside and things like the power is already routed through the cable that's going to connect to things like the receiver is already here and there's also the cable that you can use to connect to the usb-c port at the back they even have the buzzer that will fit in the socket here just on the left hand side of that bracket with all that done then it's a case of popping on the top once that's together then it's a case of building out the front fpv pod depending on the one you've got taking that out of the packet again you get a full set of all the different pieces again this is the aluminium one here again all the screws have the thread lock on really really nice when i see that i'm very happy when they think about this make sure that those screws aren't going to come unwound you put the standoffs onto one side of the frame pop the other side of the frame on then attach the plastic guides for things like the antennas and then the whole thing screws onto the front of the frame using four screws and you're done so with it together and having built it out there are quite a few things that I'll bring your attention to. I like the idea of this removable cage. I know I kind of said that at the very top, but this is a fantastic idea. Speedy B, please, please, please make this a universal thing. I'm sure there's going to be lots of 3D printable adaptions and things that people are going to come up with. I'm probably going to have a go at creating one for something like a modern walk snail system, because if I build this, that's what I would use here. Speaking of building, it is very easy to build. The manual is beautiful. Everything you need is in the packet. Even the screws have the thread lock on. It's just really simple. Just give yourself 15 minutes, a fresh cup of coffee, and you'll have it put together. 
I do like the compact design. There was a while ago when we were doing this for five inch quads where we had this kind of slam deck um, kind of setup. I actually think this is a really nice way to do a kind of three, three and a half inch quad where you have this lower height. Even though it has the lower height, there's room inside for your flight controller, there's room at back for the GPS, we have the receiver bay underneath, we have the HDFPV stuff can go in the front in loads of airflow in a way that can be removed relatively easily using only four screws, and they've integrated the power, they've applied a buzzer, the receiver wiring is here for the bay, and you've also even got the external USB-C that you can wire up at the back so you can plug it in and mess around with your flight controller. These things are excellent value for money. This is a lot of frame and a lot of features for under $40, even if you go for the 04 aluminium HD pod. Finish is excellent, as you would expect. Slightly different carbon than some of the others that I've used in the past. And there are still lots of spares in the box. And that's always nice to see. They seem to have provided deliberately more screws than you need. So if you drop one and it rolls under the sofa, you know what? It's not the end of the world. There's still everything you need in the box to not only continue building it, but if you lose one at the field, one manages to unwind because it wasn't done up properly, you've got spares there too. Only a couple of things to be aware of, really, on this. Um, obviously, single height, all-in-one flight controller is what you're going to need. There's no room for a stack. Loads of different screws when you put it together of different lengths. Most of them are M2, so just keep track of what you are doing. And if you take it apart, keep track of which screw goes where. However, the manual will sort you out if you lose track of what you're doing. 70 millimeter maximum space between the front and rear part here for the battery potentially there is a little bit more wiggle room as this back part is slightly flexible but that should be loads of room for something like a three three and a half inch quad of this size and again the head but i think i've mentioned that enough so in summary, as usual, this is a very well thought out frame for not a lot of money. I like the smaller design and the room for all the pieces with the antenna separation. We have the antenna at the back for the receiver. We have the FPV antennas at the front, GPS here, hang out the back. So if you wanted to use something like a compass, it might work, although it is a little bit close to the power connector. This FPV pod is a fantastic idea. And maybe they could have done it in a way where the rear part slots into something and the front part is held in with a couple of screws to make changing it over a little bit faster. But to be honest, it's probably safer having a few more screws in here so in the event of a nasty crash, it isn't ejected and lost forever. I'm really excited to see what comes next with this whole interchangeable pod idea, particularly as they make kind of five inch and different style quads, including whoops and other things. As they bring them out, I'll try and get them in here and show you what they look like. But this is a really well thought out quad in the three, three and a half inch size. I can't wait to see what they do next with the five inch and other sizes. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.